news today. Aria Tekiki Seventh Day Adventist Primary School in Central Guadalcanal receives a new classroom. Clark to Parliament highlights need for youth voices. And coming up later in sports, trials to select players for the second national men's football team for the MSG Prime Minister's Cup next month starts this Friday. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Osifello. Aria Tekiki Seventh Day Adventist Primary School in Central Guadalcanal has officially received its new classroom thanks to the funding from the Government of Japan. The project was made possible through Japan's grant assistance for grassroots human security projects aimed at improving learning conditions for students. Anna Dooro has the details. The classrooms will accommodate students from classes 1 to 6, offering an improved learning space for the primary students of Areta Kiki. During the handover event, the Japanese ambassador spoke about the importance of education and Japan's role in supporting this sector in the country. Japan contributed about $724,191. In total, to provide better learning environment for students' education today and into the future, in Area Takiki Seventh Day Adventist, uh, Adventist uh, Primary School, you hear today that uh, this funded infrastructure will one day produce potential leaders that will bring continuous positive change to our communities, constituency, province, and the country. This grassroots assistance, uh, assistance aims to improve and uh, to strengthen basic infrastructure in education, uh, education sector. Thus, I am delighted we have this occasion to celebrate our long-standing partnership in education. Japan will continue to aid in the education field in terms of infrastructure for all sectors territory assistance and capacity building in the workplaces to see more happy faces in many places of Solomon Islands and to cultivate cordial relationship between Japan and Solomon Islands. This is the second classroom project funded by the Japanese government. They have been instrumental in rendering support to communities with a similar occasion just last week at the Numbu Community High School. The Area Takiki staff and students expressed the occasion as historical for their community. This program is so significant to us, uh, especially the Aretakiki community. Um, it went from a milestone where a lot of us are looking forward because we feel like really facing a lot of challenges, especially in you know, the classroom uh, environment. And uh, since the Japanese embassy has uh, given me for this little project, man, I feel like over happy to me. I feel like really grateful indeed. And I feel like um, thank you, Japan, for this beautiful classroom. We are going give him come. I feel not so expressive to look at the words when I feel like telling because I feel like appreciating the law, law cultural way, especially the Chupu, but him not really cast him too. Um, what Japanese embassy have given him this gift and by really address him now classroom issue for Arata Kiki school so we're really glad and so happy for this beautiful project. The Japanese government has helped the Guadalcanal people through its grassroots office here in Honiara particularly towards the education sector of Guadalcanal province. Ana Dooro, Tavoli News. The laws made in Parliament have a significant impact on children, making it crucial for their voices to be heard. This was the key message from Clark to Parliament, Jefferson Halu, during the inaugural dialogue between school children and parliamentarians. Yesterday, students from three schools in Honiara engaged in a high-level discussion with lawmakers at the Paul Tavua complex. So involving the children and school children in the parliamentary process yeah, will help to understand how much government can work 
foster civic engagement and prepare, prepare and develop to be active and informed participants in democracy. Children bring fresh perspectives and ideas and have unique insights and solutions to problems that sometimes are those overlooked too. Yeah? Um, so your, your participation in the parliamentary process can enrich the discussions yeah? and lead to more innovative policy uh, solutions. You do represent the needs and the concerns for this for the generation of living. Children are directly affected by decisions made by parliament, from education policies to environmental regulations. Your voices help ensure that your needs and interests are considered by lawmakers and the lawmaking process. Um, your involvement strengthens democracy, including children in the parliamentary process. It promotes inclusivity, diversity, and more representative democracy where all voices are heard and valued. During the last parliamentary session, members of parliament raised concerns over delays in receiving their constituency development funds. Many MPs cited mounting pressure from their constituents regarding these funds. So, Mivala Samfala, that is our new situation. People blame Mtola, Avatakam, Visti Mtola. It is also our norm, cultural norm. Relatives come more, constituency come more, and house blame Mtola. And peace no it now. And we have no choice, but we have to just make sure let the Christ up, Captain up. And okay, there, but the salary blame Mtola, no suffit him too. So, if you never sell him, come, if you tell Papa Chet more, but him good. I understand uh, what people from me are asking me, say 600,000 come. And him taking priorities for him to now. But uh, no insulin come for him to yet. So you come and you cast him in the house. So if uh, uh, there is uh, a way for some fellow budgeted um, constituency funding for him to come, uh, I would certainly um, appreciate him, make him happy, ease him some of pressure where he stop now. You mean um, uh, MPs, particularly with that area. In response, Finance Minister Manasse Sogovare assured Parliament that members of Parliament would receive their CDF allocations by December 31st. Uh, this week now, we say, I think it's not tomorrow, today, we have a look left now, we have a no good too. And also, so like, we have a run no good too. Why not? Also, no, so, uh, me assure him, uh, uh, Parliament of that one, and also me assure him, uh, Parliament as well, that every uh, payment of constituency uh, must go past 31st, must not go past 31st of December. Uh, every payment for this year will need to be released for this year. The Canada International Training and Education Corporation, or CITREC, has officially signed an agreement with Renbel Province to join its labour mobility program. Speaking at the launch event earlier this week, CITREC chairman expressed his satisfaction, saying he is delighted that Renbel Province has now become part of this initiative. Jong province, which is a World Heritage Site, has no reason to be left out, and that is why my vision and commitment to you tonight is that I'm going to help you and your constituency and you people to be part of this celebration and to be part of the world map and to be part employment sector to be part of education and training and anything I ask is help me God. <laughs> Solomon Islands is sitting on a real time bomb when I look at unemployment youths. This country has enormous opportunities in the export sector. It has many opportunities which goes untapped. And to implement that, you need a visionary member of parliament. That is all said, and here we have someone who has chosen this part to walk. Let me also say that as part of the CITREC program, 
we are going to not only empower youths, but we are going to walk hand in hand with women of the community. We are going to train you. We are going to bring Canadian standard education and training to you into agriculture sector, into hospitality and tourism sector, and make you self-sustainable. Our success story with the Solomon Islands into labor mobility has resulted temporary foreign workers to be called permanent residents. And I swear to God that I want to see your people, your constituents, Honorable MP, to receive the same. And we shall work together and in hand to achieve. The Labour Mobility Programme aims to provide training and job opportunities abroad, fostering economic growth and empowering communities in participating provinces. Renville Province's inclusion marks another milestone in Citrix's efforts to connect Solomon Islanders with meaningful employment opportunities.